Okay, guys, we're going to review our lesson um, on simulations today, um, probability simulations, that is. And I'm going to start with the independent practice, but first I want to make sure um, that you all have the correct definition of a simulation. Okay, so a simulation is an imitation of a chance process giving similar results so it can act as a prediction. Okay, so it's a simulation of a chance process uh, giving possible results that could serve as a prediction. And that sounds like a little bit of a confusing definition, but we're gonna take a look now um, with the IP and hopefully it'll become more clear. So Sherry learned that about 10% of students are late to school each day. About 10% of students are late to school each day. To represent this situation, she performed a simulation where five numbers are randomly generated. The number nine represents a student who is late. And the numbers zero through eight represent students who arrived on time. Now, what makes this uh, a valid simulation so far is that I have between zero and 10, I have between zero and nine, I have 10 digits, right? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And so nine, choosing only nine, does represent 10% of those possible digits. And then the zero through eight are the rest of the 90%. Okay. So each of these digits is going to represent um, a student who is either on time or late in this trial that I'm doing, okay? So <clears throat> we can answer this question. What does each individual number in the simulation represent? So it represents um, a student arriving to school. Okay, and what does each row of five numbers represent? So that represents um, one trial, one trial of five students arriving to school. Okay. So if I go over here and I take a look at trial one, I see that I have a nine here. I have a nine here. So in this particular trial, I had two students arrive late, okay? So that's kind of what we're looking for. And we'll, we can answer questions based on this. So how many students were late in the first trial? Okay, well, I already answered that question. So two students were late in the first trial. Okay, two students were late. <clears throat> My next question. How many of the trials show that two or more students out of the group of five were late? Okay, so I have to go back up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to circle every time I see uh, that number nine representing that late student. So in trial two... I only had one student that was late. In trial three, looks like everybody was on time. Trial four, again, I have one student. Trial five, it looks like I have two students again. Two students here. Okay, so I'll put these over here. Two, one, zero students there. One student there. Two here. Two here. Uh, zero. Looks like I have a few days here with no late students. Zero, zero. Here's one. Trial 10. One. Trial 11. Ooh, there's one. Oh, and I missed one here. In trial 10, it looks like two. Okay, trial 11 is just one. Trial 12, zero. Trial 13, I have one student late. Trial 14, I have zero students late. Trial 15, I have one student late. Trial 16, I have three students late. Mm -hmm. Trial 17, everybody, 
on time, trial 18, zero, trial 19, just one, and trial 20, zero. Okay, so I'm looking at how many, uh, my question was how many uh, of the trial show two or more students late. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here and it looks like I had <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five. It looks like there were five days where I had two or more students late. Okay. So five trials. Okay, so how many trials show that out of the group of five, all students were on time? So I wanna go back up and I actually wanna count my zeros for this, okay? So I have <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it looks like there were nine days or nine trials where all of the students were listed as being on time. So there were nine trials here. Okay. We're gonna move on to homework, <clears throat> which will give us a little bit more practice with this trial situation with our simulations, but also um, give us a little bit of a review. Okay, here. Mr. Dupree loves to go whale watching. Oh, is this the exit ticket? Oh, that was the exit ticket, okay. We'll go over homework. All right. At the North Star High School, 50% of the students ride the bus. Um, <clears throat> 50% of the students ride the bus. The random number table below can be used to conduct a simulation. In the table, an even digit represents a student who rides the bus, and an odd digit represents a student who does not ride the bus. For the purposes of this simulation, consider zero to be an even number, okay? And so this right here is a cell. So this is one cell of numbers. Uh, first, let's just review, just in case we forgot. So our evens in this case are gonna be zero, two, four, six, eight. And our odds are gonna be one, three, five, nine. Zero, two, four, six, eight. And then one, three, five, nine. Hmm. Okay, so even though this is a 50% uh, chance here, our simulation right now isn't working out to be 50%, um, but I'm just assuming they needed somewhere to put that zero, whoever made this, okay? So, uh, all right. <clears throat> Look at the top left cell of the table. The digits in the cell represent six randomly selected students. Out of the six students, how many ride the bus to school? Okay, so our even digits are students who ride the bus. So I have two, that's even, and I have four. Three, one, seven, and nine are all odd. So in cell one, okay, I have two students out of the six. Okay, or one third of those students in that cell are riding the bus to school. So there are 40 cells in the table. Repeat, repeat the process from the first bullet. So that's up here. For each of the cells, keep track of the number of cells in which at least four students ride the bus to school. How many of the 40 cells did you count? Okay, well, this is quite a task. And I'm gonna actually use the highlighter here. So here we had two 
and four. So there were two there. My next cell, I have six, two, four, four. All right, and I'm looking for four students. So I'm gonna do a tally mark here. There's one of them, um, eight, two, zero. All right, eight, two, zero. So there's only three in that cell. Eight, two, four. There's only three in that cell. Four, two, zero. Same here. Eight, two, eight, four, eight. All right, so there's another one. And eight, four, eight, six, four. All right, four, two, eight. Here I've got two and eight. Here I've got four, two, eight, four. Here is another one. Here I have four, zero, and four, two, four, five, nine, seven, that's it. Okay, two, eight, six, and four. Two, eight, and four, eight, two, four, zero. Here's another one. Two, eight, and six, two, four, zero, two, eight, four, four. Here's another one. Eight, six, four, eight, eight. Six, two, four, two, two, four, and eight. Okay, four, and six, four, two, eight, four, and four. All right, here's another one. Eight, six, and two. Make sure I'm not missing any here. Two, zero, six, four, zero, zero, two, zero, eight. Here's another one. Uh, eight, two, six, uh, and then four, zero. I know this seems very tedious, guys, but sometimes the math is very tedious. Wow, and here's another one where they're all even. Um, four and six, eight. Six, four, four, two, four, six, zero, eight, four, and four, and then two, and six. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have a total of eight cells where four or more, at least four, students ride the bus to school. So I have eight cells. How many students did all of the, how many, in how many cells did all of the students ride the bus? And I think I had um, this one up here, four, zero, zero, two, zero, eight. I had, no, that has a five in it. I only remember one, but I'm just going to double check here. Oh, here's another one, four, two, eight, four, four, eight. That has a five, so that has a nine. Okay, so there looks like there were two cells where all students rode the bus in that particular simulation. Okay. Now we're gonna do a little bit of a mixed review. Um, I do really want you to pay attention to this part because we do have our IA on Thursday and you are gonna see um, questions from all of the standards we've done this year. Um, so let's make sure that we are really giving our all for this homework. Okay, let's begin with our mixed review. Deshaun is planning on going bowling. He knows that he'll have to spend 475 
for each game that he bowls. In addition, he will need to spend two fifty to rent shoes, three dollars for a soda, and two dollars for a candy bar. Deshawn has a budget of twenty-five dollars. What is the maximum number of games? Maximum number of games that he can bowl. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little key information box here. Okay. So my key information box lets me know that I have these three one-time fees. My one-time fees are uh, two fifty, two dollars for the candy bar, and three dollars for the soda. Okay, so my one-time fees equal five six seven fifty. Okay, and I also know that the games are, uh, let's see here, four seventy five. Four seventy five per game. All right, and I know that he has twenty five dollars. So I'm gonna say seven fifty. That's my one time fee, plus four seventy five G for game is equal to twenty five dollars. Oh, is equal, sorry, is less than or equal to $25, okay? Minus 750 from both sides. <clears throat> All right, getting a little sloppy over here. So when I subtract <clears throat> 750 from 25, I get 1750. So now I have four. 75 G is equal to 1750. I'm going to divide both sides by 475 divided by 4.75. Okay. And my answer is 3.6 something or other, 3.6, blah, 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 blah. But I can't play 0.6 of a game. So the highest number of games I can play is three. Moving forward. I'll erase this up here. A mechanic charges a base rate of $45 per hour, plus the cost of any tools or parts that she needs to order. The mechanic fixed Daniela's car and charged a total of $206, including $71 that was spent on parts. Which of the equations below can be used to determine how many hours the mechanic spent working on Daniela's car? Okay, I'm going to read that one again. All right, so my base rate for this mechanic is $45 per hour and the cost of any tools or parts that she needs to order. So the mechanic fixed Daniela's car and charged a total of $206 including the $71 that was spent on parts. Which of the equations below can be used to determine how many hours the mechanic spent working on Daniela's car? All right, so I'm gonna say it is 71 plus 45 H for hours equals 206, okay? And I need to find an equation here that uh, matches that. All right, so I have here 45 out times 71 plus X. That's not going to work, okay, because then I would get 45 times 71. I'd be way, way out of place here. Now I have 45 X minus 71 equals 206. 
Um, I don't like this one either because it would be what I got if I didn't include the parts. Here I have X distributed to 45 and 71. Well, the 45 is the only thing that's dependent on a variable. The 71 was that just the fee, all right? So here I have 45X, here I've used H, plus 71 equals 206. So my answer here is D. It's in a slightly different order. I used a different variable. All of that is okay. Your answer is D. Number three, a submarine was 459 feet below the surface of the water. Below the surface of the water. It began to ascend, which means go up, at a rate of 32 feet per minute. Which of the equations below can be used to determine how many minutes it will take for the submarine to reach a depth of 267 feet below the surface? Okay. So I'm still going to be 267 feet below the surface. Uh, is, so my, my final destination here is still below the surface. So if this is the surface and I'm starting here at uh, negative 459, okay, I'm moving up till I get to negative 260. Seven. That's going to be where I land. So what equation is going to help me get there? So if I do 459 plus 32x is equal to negative 267. Hmm. I don't like that because the really the 32x is the only thing that should be uh, getting you to that 267. All right, guys, sorry, I had to pause for a second. Okay, so I don't like this guy. All right, I'm starting below sea level. If I add 32x to 459, getting to negative 267 is gonna be tough, okay? So now if I have 459 minus 32x, that's not gonna help me either. I'm starting at negative 459. Negative 459 plus 32x equals negative 267, okay? Because I know that I'm ascending. So that 32x has to be positive. So that's why I'm choosing D. Uh, negative 459 minus 32x is gonna make me go even deeper into the water, okay? So I'm ascending, I'm ascending from negative 459 feet to negative 267, oops, I pressed seven there. Okay, so this C is my equation that's gonna help me out here. <clears throat> At the mall, Adesher brought three sweaters. Two of them cost the same amount. Sorry guys, a little technical difficulty here. Okay. Two of them cost the same amount. So he bought three sweaters. Two of them cost the same amount. And the third cost $22.50. If Sarah, it looks like we changed our name here, spent a total of $58.50, how much did each one of the two sweaters that cost the same amount cost? All right, let's read that again because it's actually not so hard okay so at the mall i think her name is sarah sarah <laughs> bought three sweaters two of them cost the same amount and the third cost 22.50 if sarah spent a total of 58.50 how much did one of the sweaters cost so in my key information box here okay i have uh one sweater okay was 22.50 I have two sweaters that were both cost X. And I have a total of 58.50, okay? So what I wanna do, 22.50 
plus 2x is equal to 58. 50. I'm going to subtract 2250 from both sides. Excuse me. Okay. All right. So I'm left with 2x equals $36. All right. If I divide both sides by 2, I should get 18. Okay. All right. So gentlemen, that's it for this homework. Um, today was not our best day of class for any of the three classes. Um, so really nail down this homework to make sure that you are prepared for the IA. Thanks and have a good night.